very interesting uh, book because it correlates with what we've been learning all right and again um we're not here to like basically try to debate we're not trying to debate what we already know to be true we're not trying to debate people who want to be stuck in a in a story right like in a storyline we're never showing sources never or if they're just if their personal history is is that you know that's their personal history that doesn't mean everybody else's history is that you know, so, you know, come with respect. Now, we're not here to play games and be sarcastic or anything. We're here to build and learn. And, uh, you know, if you want to present some sources, you know, you're free to do your own video so we can look at the information and verify it ourselves uh, with the uh, sources that you present, you know, so we could uh, see if it's, uh, you know, legit or what it is, if it's, just, you know, fairy tales or what, you know. But, uh, yeah, well, we just, you know, always got to talk sources. Now, I got this book right here, the Jacobite Gleanings from State Manuscripts, Short Sketches of Jacobite, The Transportations in 1745 by Jake Macbeth Forbes. This is from the Harvard College Library from the bequest of Thomas Rand Ward. It says the Jacobite Gleanings from State Manuscripts, Short Sketches of Jacobite, The Transportations in 1745 by J. Macbeth. An exact list and description of 150 rebel prisoners shipped at Liverpool on board the veteran John Rickey, master for the Leeward Islands, which were taken near Antigua the 28th June last by the Diamond Privateer Paul Marcelli, commander and carried into Martinico the 30th June of 1747. All right. What are we going to see here? The passenger list of all these prisoners, Jacobites. Now, let's see, it says name, age, profession, the county, the statute, remarks, so any other thing, right? And number one, just for example, we're going to start with number one. It says Robert Adam, 18. He was 18. He was a laborer, county. He's from Sterling. He was five feet, one inch, very short. He's brown. He's brown, smooth face, right? He's brown, all right? He's brown. William Bell, 46 Weaver, Berwick, 5'4". He's black with curled hair he's strong made all right douglas Dougal or dougal we already know about dougal dougal campbell servant lockaber 54 he's also brown complexion well made and ruddy brown complexion alex katana 17 all right young these are young miller bandanock all right he's from bandanock he's 55 he's black ruddy black ruddy all right. A lot of you is probably still saying, well, that probably means white. Well, we'll see. All right. We'll see. Dougal Campbell, Dougal, Douglas, du Dougal, Dougal, <laughs> Swarty, Swarty, right? He's a servant. Argyle. He's 5'5", five, five, one fourth. He's brown also. And also ruddy, healthy, well-made and ruddy, it says, I guess. Alex Campbell. All right. We already know about the Campbells. We just read that, right? 18. He's a laborer. Iverness 548. He's pock pitted. He's pock pitted. Whatever that means. John Campbell, he's 20. He's 5'2. He's swarthy. All right. He's swarthy. There's no saying, oh, well, that black means no, swarthy. He's swarthy. Alex Cameroon, he's well made. He's swarthy because this doo doo, brown, 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 swarthy, brown, pock picket. Oh, I guess so. These are all brown people. See that? The DO is ditto, ditto, ditto. All right. William Dickinson, red hair, thick set and healthy. Alex David Davidson, he's ruddy and slim made. 
Andrew Edwards, he's black, well made, strong. All right, Alex Goodbrand. All right, so I want you to see all these people, right? All these people, look at the names. Brown, black, brown, black, brown, black, thin, black, black, brown, ditto, 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 and so on, and so on, and so on. Do you see any of your last names here? These are Jacobites. You understand what a Jacobite is? Huh? This is a long list. I'm trying to tell you. All right. I'm going to show you, son. Donald McGillis, McDonald, McDougal. All right. Muck, muck, muck. We already know what all that means. McDonald, brown, thick, black, swarthy, slender. Black, swarthy, slender. So that doesn't mean white because you can't be white, swarthy, right? Black, swarthy, brown, straight, sandy hair, brown, diddle, 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 diddle. Just a Black. quick reminder, we're here in the American Dictionary of the English Language, all right? This is actually Webster's uh, 1828 uh, Dictionary. All right, I got the official PDF. We're going to go all the way to the word uh, swarthy, all right? And right here, it says swart, right? Almost sounds like steward. Swart, Stewart, Swart, Stewart. I would they get Stewart. Did it mean black or dark? What is Swart? It says being of dark hue, moderately black, tawny, Swart. All right. Down here it says Swart to make tawny or brown. Swart, an apparition. <laughs> Swartly. All right. Duskly with a tawny hue. It says Swartness. Honeyness, a dusky or dark complexion, dark complexion, right? Dark complexion, swarthy, being of a dark hue or dusky complexion. Tawny, in warm climates, the complexion of men is universally what? Swarthy or what? Black in warm climates. Is there only warm climates in Africa? No, we have warm climates all over the world, right? The Moors, Spaniards, and Italians are more swarthy than the French, Germans, and English. This says their swarthy hose would darken all our plains. Swarthy, all right, black, as the swarthy African, it says, right? As the swarthy African. So the African is swarthy, right? Swarthy is a tawny color. Swartish, somewhat dark or tawny. Swarthy, swarthy, tawny, all right? So you get the picture, right? Swarthy, so an African is swarthy, right? Black, black, straight, ditto, swarthy, Lusty. <laughs> See all these uh, last names, right? See the names. Black. Hell-faced. There you go. Hell-faced. All right? This is pale-faced. They tell you fair-faced. Hell-faced. When they're pale-faced, they're telling you fair. Black, brown. Fair complexion. Pale. All right, so this when they're saying black, it doesn't mean white or fair or pale because they're telling you when they're pale, pale complexion again. All right, fair. Now, this could be a light skinned, dark skinned person, it could just be a light skin, but they're telling you straight up, pale complexion, fair. Could be straight up a white person, right? Straight up, pale, a real pale person, brown, dark complexion, well made, Joseph Brown. Brown, dark complexion, well-made. Daniel Duff, right? What did we learn about Duff and Dub? All right, dark hair, healthy, brown, sickly. Sickly, wow. He don't sound good. Well-made, brown complexion, brown complexion, all right? Pale hair, sickly, dark visage, strong, healthy. Pale complexion, all right? This guy's pale, James Mann, all right? And the list continues. There's a long list here. Remember how much they had? Dark complexion, dark. So what is the uh, pattern we're seeing here? If anybody has noticed already, you know, I would ask my daughter, you know, what is the, what is the pattern? She would say, well, they're all dark. They're all brown. I'm like, yes, exactly. It's a majority of dark complexion. People here, brown complexion, swarthy. As you can see, these are all swarthy, dark, you know, dark complexion, black, sturdy. Look, dark hair, brown, black, dark brown, nut brown. He's a nut brown, dark hair. He's fair.
Brown Spring, Brown. I'll look at the last names, read. Brown Sprightly, Light Brown, Light Brown, there you go. Even when they're light, light brown, they're getting very specific, all right? They were probably doing that for a reason, make sure later on they'd be like, well, he's a, he's darker, let's make him longer, let's take, you know, he's pale, let's, you know. You know, they were taking this for a reason. Black man, brown, light brown, dark chestnut, all right, dark brown, Thomas, bold. You did kill. <laughs> this is Margaret Dykes, Mary McKenzie, Barbara Camel, James McIntosh. All right. Says this description was taken by Mr. Smith at Lincoln, York, and Lancaster in October 1746. All right. Primary source. Do you understand what a primary source is? These are people from that time writing this down. All right. This is not pseudo just because it's old. So a lot of people like to use that because we're reading older books that it means pseudo that automatically older books are lie or pseudo. And that's totally false. And when you hear that alarm should go off right there. You should see why is this person doing this, trying to dodge me from this information why is this person trying to keep me from knowing this information this is not pseudo this is actually in a harvard library it's not under the fictional aisle i don't even think they got a full they probably do got a fictional aisle like every other library but i don't think this would be there in their fictional aisle this is history all right and they don't teach people this if they would have taught me this in school elementary school they would have shown me this and said, dark, 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 <laughs> you know, swarthy brown. I'm like, well, teacher, that, that sounds like, like a black person, teacher. What was she going to say? You know, they don't even got the teachers trained to rebuttal stuff like this. Teachers can't even go outside of what they read. Those textbooks they're given. They don't go outside of that. But we're, we're going straight to the primary sources. And we're not talking about Africans. The list is taken from three different gals, Lincoln, York, and Lancaster. And it's likely that the first 46 prisoners whose names are all alphabetically arranged would come from Lincoln. The other names from York and Lancaster being inserted without any regard to sequence of the 135 men. 18 hailed from Perthshire, 20 from Iverness, 25 from Aberdeen, 19 from England, and one from Ireland. All right, so yeah, it tells you right here. Then I think right here says there was an Edinburgh writer, George Gumi, age 30, marked as a black man whose color would no doubt suit the West Indies. Say what? Oh, I didn't expect that one. You hear what they just said right there. Let me go back. As to the trades represented, 55 were laborers, 11 servants, 20 weavers, four herdsmen, two gentlemen, Number 105, John McKenzie. 22, Ross Shire. Well-made gentle. They had numbers. You see that? They had numbers. Their property. Number 111, John Osler. 20, Lincoln's brown-haired gentile. There was an Edinburgh writer, George Hume, age 30. He was marked as a black man whose color would no doubt suit the West Indies. Oh, he'll fit right in in the West Indies. This black man. You're talking about European Jacob. But that's right. We're not talking about Africans. But real quick, I just want to show you guys another example. This is another list of Jacobites from two years later, 1747. In this case, there was a ship that was intercepted by French. As it says right here, this is in the nationalarchive.gov.uk. It says prisoners for transportation. Extracts from a list naming 150 Jacobite prisoners taken by the French in October 1747, as recorded by W. Smith at Lincoln, York, and Lancaster. This is the list referred to by Samuel Smith, whose ship was captured. And this is a transcription of the list. Just want to show you guys a whole different list, different people. It starts with James Nielsen. It says he is black and swarthy. Okay, he's so swarthy. So-called black, swarthy, Jonathan Robertson is brown, straight, ditto. 
Daniel Ross, he is swarthy as well. It says he's a servant. William Robertson, brown, well-made. We got George Bain. He is swarthy, so swarthy. We got John Stewart. All right, the Stewarts, just like King James, the Stewarts. He is brown, well-made, and swarthy. So of course, there is the like there is the fair skin and the pale face. So you guys can see the distinguishments they're making here. There's definitely people of dark complexion and light complexions. We got Elizabeth McFarland. She's black, lusty, and ruddy. We have James Dunbar. He's dark complexion, well made. We got George Hume, a black man. Effie Cameron, swarthy, so swarthy. So you guys get it. So even though everybody's not dark, I just want you guys to see there was so-called black people as Jacobites being sent as prisoners to the plantations, to the colonies in the Caribbean and the east coast of north america the more you look into it the more you're going to see the more you study the ancient people of scotland and the original jacobites you will see there is melanated people in that we're going to get another quick reference before we go today today just going to go over again who the highlanders are real quick i found a great source here confirming our previous research on the Scottish Highlanders. We're in the University of Michigan library here. And I'm in the book Annals of the Caledonians, Picts and Scots, and of Stretch Clyde, Cumberland, Galloway, and Murray by Joseph Ritson Esquire. Joseph Ritson Esquire. This book was written in 1828, almost 1700s, 1828. The Annals of the Caledonians, Picts, and Scots. So we're in the introduction of the book. We're on page around seven of this book when he's talking about the Highlanders, distinguishing the Highlanders from the Lowlanders. I'm going to zoom in. So again, we're on page seven. We're going to go to the paragraph in the bottom. He says here, in all ancient writings, he adds that the Highlanders are generally diminutive with brown complexions brown complexions, and almost always with black, curled hair and dark eyes. All right, I want you guys to see that. He just said the Highlanders, the Scottish Highlanders, have a brown complexion and black, curled hair, black, curled hair, brown complexion. All right, again, the Annals of the Caledonians, Picts and Scots by Joseph Ritson. Another source letting us know the Highlanders were people of color, so-called Negro people. Mm -hmm.